Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good day, good night to steal a line from Truman for whichever part of the world you are and welcome to the Inspired Poetry Corner recital. Um, it is Sunday, June 19th. It's uh, 9.15 where I am in Toronto, Canada. And I say welcome to the beautiful faces and humans that I see from around the world. And thank you for joining us today. Uh, in the tradition of the third Sunday that this is becoming, we're celebrating the work of Mr. Julian Matthews out of Malaysia. So really looking forward to that. And then as I was saying uh, while we were talking before, I think we have uh, 12 to 13 other not ready for primetime poets that will be supporting Julian on his feature. So uh, I just wanted to say thank you all for being here. You know, welcome to the Sunday morning church revival. Today, the religion is poetry. Today we get to celebrate words and our creativity and the flow of it and the flow of life. And as poets, it is our job, I believe, to tap into to that creativity and bring it out, not just write it, but to speak it and to share it. Um, I think it's brilliant when we see these words on paper, but it's even, it, it takes it to a different level when you hear it spoken, particularly from, from the one that wrote it. So uh, I welcome you in, in, in sharing and in, in our love for poetry, our love for words, and not just poetry, but just writing in general. So I thank you all for being here. Uh, before we, uh, we start with our feature, just a few, uh, uh, housekeeping items. Um, when you're not uh, speaking, obviously keep your mics uh, muted. Um, I think we've all been in enough Zoom recitals. We know what to do, but it's you know, it's in a contract. I have to I have to mention these things. So um, I, I'm not one that that likes to restrict speech. I trust that I am in a room of other conscious humans that are adults that understand how to, to, to use the power of their words and, and their voice in a, in a way, even if you have a position that may not be popular, position it in a way that, that's empathetic and loving. And it's our jobs to do the same thing. So I, I say, hey, poets, speak your truth. Um, obviously, keep yourself muted, like I said, when, when people are reciting. When someone is in their set um, and, and for the not ready for primetime poets, uh, I, we have a little bit more than normal. Usually I invite 12 poets to recite. I think we have 14, depending on if everyone shows up. So if everyone does show up, you'll get to recite two pieces. Um, I would say five minutes, but I, I don't really sit here with a timer. My shows are, are, are known to go a little bit longer because I invite people to sit still, leave your social media and other things on, on to the side and be fully engaged in this moment because there was a time we would sit for hours and talk and share poetry and not be distracted by TV and radio. So this is an invitation for us to do that, to be fully present in this moment and to, to give all our attention and love to where we are. So when, when a poet has finished their set, um, I invite you to unmute and really whoop it up, whoop it up. Like I said earlier, we are alive. We got up on the right side of the dirt this morning and we get to do poetry first thing in the morning. Life is great. So, so please show your appreciation and love. I know you do, but it takes a lot of courage regardless whether you're doing this virtually or in person. It takes a lot of courage to stand up and open your mouth and speak your truth. For those that are in attendance today, um, I invite you, if you, if you want to recite in, in, in future uh, shows, please just let me know. I'll probably reach out to you anyway. Um, like I said, this is not an open mic. So if you're here, you're here to support. But we're all here to support each other in regards to the venture of, of, of uplifting our human consciousness. And that's what I think we all have in common. We're here to uplift our human consciousness. It doesn't matter what your political beliefs are, which side of the aisle you may stand right or left, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, we're human. And we all, I believe, have a desire for the uplifting of our human consciousness. And that's what I believe, you know, for me, I know you speak for myself, the main job of a poet is to contribute to uplifting our human consciousness. So enough said about that. Um, if there's any questions you may have, try to uh, please use the, the chat. I will do my best to, to monitor it and, and, and answer your questions. Um, for those of you that have the ability to listen and to, to leave comments on a, on a poem, please do so. 
I have not developed that spidey sense, so I find it too distracting. So this is why a lot of times when poets are, are reciting, I close my eyes because I don't want to be distracted by seeing them so I could fully absorb it. So I have not developed that spidey sense, but I think I know Richard provides a lot of comments. So if you like Richard, I can do that, please do so. And just support each other and love each other like we have always done. So uh, before we get going, does anyone have any questions, any concerns that they would like to know? Okay, well, I hope you are fully charged up or whatever beverage you choose to have this morning. So it is my distinct pleasure to welcome Julian Matthews as our feature for this month's recital. Um, as I, you know, I'm impressed with all the poets that I've come across with, but Julian has a, a way, I, I was thinking as uh, he was doing his uh, technical sound check earlier, is there a way to capture his voice so I can have him recite the ABCs when I go to bed? Because I could just listen to this man read even the phone book. Um, you have a quality in your voice that's very soothing, um, but it says, I should listen. This man has something important to say. And I've listened to a number of variety of poems of different themes and that, that quality comes through. So ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct pleasure and honor on behalf of, of, of the Inspired uh, Poetry Corner and the Inspired Poetry <clears throat> Project, which I do this under, uh, start, uh, that was started up by my friend Richard Lamaru. Uh, I present to you, I present to the world, all the way from Malaysia, poet, writer, father, the human being, but I think a very big heart and obviously a very interesting ticker upstairs, Mr. Julian Matthews. Unmute and let, let's hear it for him, guys. Hi. Thanks for having me, Raul. Uh, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, so I have 20 minutes and about maybe six or seven poems for you. Um, content warning, blanket content warning, the poems will cover maybe addiction, alcoholism, depression, suicide ideation, <laughs> death, grief, and snakes. All the good stuff. <laughs> if you feel any of this is going to trigger, uh, be a trigger for you, perhaps, you know, uh, respectfully I ask you to turn down your volume. So let's begin. It's um, The first one is called uh, since it's uh, two years and it's uh, Juneteenth today, and I thought I'd uh, kick off with this. Nameless Dead. Let me put the alarm. Nameless Dead. Today I am George Floyd yesterday someone you casually avoided all that said then done you're still bloody afraid tomorrow i'll be among the many nameless dead in the un ununited states white is white black is black if a man is in blue stops me color could get me whack one wrong move i'm a godfather's bloody horse head just another hidden hit job among the many nameless dead I could be from Congo, Zimbabwe, or Eritrea. I could be from Palestine, Yemen, Haiti, or Syria. Do you think of me after all the news you've read? Just another bloody headline, nations full of the many, nameless dead. I could be a migrant washed up on your shore. I could be right outside knocking on your door, but you still stuffed me beneath the floor of your king-size bed, just another bloody colony among histories, many nameless dead. I could be named after a rose that smells just as sweet. I could hide my withering underside and be discreet, even disguise my tawny accent until my tongue bled, but you still cut me at the stem and lay me among the many nameless dead. In my dreams, I swam across, surfaced and survived. I could have been a writer, a poet, an artist and thrived. I could have been a leader, a speaker, someone who gives talks at TED, but you 
pushed me under, left me to drown among the nameless dead. For nine minutes, nay, four centuries, I told you I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. But you still crushed my neck with your knee like a piece of meat. I called out for my mama one last time, but it was too late. I lie here now among the many, many nameless dead. End poem. Thank you. Next one is a bit of a prose. Uh, quite lengthy, about six minutes. Snake stories. My mother had a relationship with a snake. I don't say this lightly or in jest. She really believed in it. Once when I came home to inform her I was getting married, she said the palm bird, snake in Tamil, already paid a visit and told her the news. Similarly, when we were expecting our first child, she already knew the snake had delivered the message. I never questioned it. When I was 13, we lived in a row of terrace houses that had an abandoned area behind that was covered in undergrowth, which attracted all sorts of creepy crawlies to the extended kitchen at the back. One day, we discovered a black cobra had made its home in a hole next to the drain pipe in Mum's kitchen. I remember the drama of coaxing it out with hot water with each of us armed with something, a bat, a broomstick, a hole, a machete ready to strike and screaming as it slid out and raised its hooded head. And somehow, all of us missed the target until my mother stepped in and sliced it clean through. She was always decisive that day, that way. Never showed fear, made me suck it up when I came crying from a fall or a cut and sent me off amid the snot and tears to go get the plaster of mercurichrome myself from the medicine cabinet. She did hug and show deep affection like most mothers, but only when I was little. I sensed immediately she regret killing the cobra. She was Hindu by birth and converted to Catholicism when she married dad. The killing of a snake, even watching it be being killed is a bad omen. She must have made amends later as is the custom to future snakes that showed up. Two. Sometime later, there was a story which made world news of a rubber tapper in Malaysia being squeezed to death by a huge python. Another man had stumbled upon the scene when the snake was in mid-swallow, its mouth stuck around the shoulder blades. It literally had bitten off more than it could chew, and it was later killed. My dad read the story out loud to us with a mixture of awe and sly humor, of course. Later, there was a consult with a pink book with the fierce Chinese god in front that had tiny draw drawings which corresponded with four-digit numbers. You looked up a drawing, usually it came to you in a dream, and tried your luck at the Empat Numbo Eko four-digit lottery shops. I don't think the snake number brought Dad any luck, no matter how many combinations of it he tried. Just like the unlucky, hapless tapper who couldn't be revived. Three, my mother has passed on for over five years now. The other day, my wife had a vivid dream of her, which she remembered. She said my mom was hugging me tightly, something we rarely did when I turned an adult. I wondered then whether there were snakes in heaven and whether one came to her again, sending us a message through a dream. Maybe it was good news, maybe it was bad. We know mothers and all dogs, as a matter of principle, are sent to heaven when they pass, but what about snakes? Is there a place even for them there too? Years ago when I told the story of Adam and Eve to my children, I thought after the fall that the snake logically had to follow them out of Eden. Who would the snake torment or tempt in paradise left by itself? No snake is an island. And I wondered about all the snakes in my life, the reptilian and the two-legged kind, whether it was worth forgiving and reaching out or just moving on without the drama, without the need to assuage and make amends. Maybe it's the uncoiling of these times that has left some of us spiraling into apathy, less serpent, more servient. Some days I have enough snake in me to swallow me whole. Most days I just want to curl up and be left alone. 
And then it occurred to me, maybe there was never a snake in my mother's back kitchen after all. She just used the story to remind me that there is a bit of snake in all of us. Sometimes the snake in us makes us hiss, bite, tempt or torment others. Sometimes it can constrict or wind us up. Maybe to move forward, all we need to do is make the choice to shed old skins and be remade anew. Maybe the snake is just here to be the bearer of the message, the lesson from all this death and dying. And like my mother, we need to make peace with it and let go. Maybe we just need to listen to the sound of our own rattle and find our way back to Eden and never ever again kill the messenger. End poem. Thank you. I'm just going to share screen briefly for this. Um, so this on, if you can see it, it's called the Darwin's Arch. It's in Galapagos. So uh, sometime last year it collapsed, unfortunately. And that's how it looks now. This is called Darwin's Arch. Darwin's Arch in the Galapagos has now collapsed. Was it just natural erosion or has the climate crisis claimed another victim? Our hands were once bridges. Hands that stretched from rugged interior of Borneo to the manicured gardens of the Down House in Kent. Alfred, Alfred Russell Wallace wrote thoughtful missives to Charles Darwin and their clever measure, measured exchanges led to the discovery of natural selection, the origin of species and how we came to be forever linking nature to humanity. Our hands are now cleavers riddled with lines of our own destruction. Keyboard warriors are drive-by comment assassins. We trade barbs and burns like grenades. Trolls lock and load, then let fly and run for cover. Knee-jerk reactionaries trump thoughtful discourse. Spoken word is spit. Metaphors are the bomb. We are hair-triggered for calling out. Content beats context. We tag and label in towers of Babel. Selfie-absorbed narcissists are influencers. Clock watchers are now TikTokers. Going viral is really a disease. Fevered scrolling and infectious sharing emojis are just poles for the polarizing. It's all in or fallout, boy. The either-or binary, the descent of man, corollary. Opposable thumbs once evolved to grasp pools, pool, tools. Now they swipe right or swipe left as Tinder fuel. It's armchair outrages and victim stages. If a mouse click is all you need to feel empowered, then a dick or a clip that is serviceable is all one needs to be laser sighted as targetable. The online climate isn't changing. It's in crisis. And yes, our social media house is burning. We are turning back in time, tweet by toxic tweet, letting the flames spread from room to chat room until all that's left are bashes of ashes and roasts for the compost file. pile. Fighting fire with firestorm is futile. Flamethrowers are only devolving into carbon copies of our sapient cannibalistic murderous origins. After the crime scene is yellow taped, do not cross. Their fingers should be dusted for hashtags. Screenshot residue is never carbon neutral. Pandemics will come and go, but the endemic sins of pride, envy, greed, and gluttony are here to stay. The selfish gene really is in a selfish fit. Even the blind watchmaker knows when to call it quits. Watch this space. Another TikToker has, melt, has a meltdown. It's the survival of the fittest in all its full glory has another arch. Frenemy breaks off 
and sinks beneath the waves. End poem. Thank you. Um, short piece. It's just called Leaf. Leaf. Take this leaf from my life. Let it fall where it may. For what is a leaf without a branch? What is a branch without a tree? What is a tree without roots? And what are roots without water? And what is water without earth? And what is the earth without the ocean? And what is the ocean without waves? And what are waves without the moon? And what is the moon without the star? And what is the star without some darkness? And why am I still here in the light and you there in the shade, knowing that one of us is right or both of us were so, so wrong? And that what is left is left. And that even the fallen can stay grounded wherever we land. And poem, thank you. And this one is called The Poems We Write. It was in an anthology called Once Upon a Poem. It's about poets writing about writing poetry. The Poems We Write. Your poem is bird song on a morning walk in a manicured garden. My poem is hooting in the night. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Your poem is a field of sunflowers, petals turning towards the sun, food for the bees. My poem is poison ivy, a weed creeping under skin, a rash that itches and swells. Your poem is sunlight reflected on a raging radiant river. My poem paces in unlit corners, peering through bars of its own cage. Your poem is a trip to the coast, a dip in cool waters, a moonlit dinner, a real catch. My poem is fish bait, worms on a barbed hook, snapped lines, the one that got away. My poem is salt and vinegar in an open wound, cigarette burns on raw skin. Your poem is the ice pack, the cool balm, the dressing for the healing. My poem is slash and burn, a forest in flames, the smoky inhalation. Your poem is oof. Needs a deep breath after, oxygen for the brain. My poem is the temptation in the desert, the mirage, the searing sun. Your poem is the search and rescue, the long ride home, the oasis at journey's end. My poem is the emotional smack in the face. Your poem is the embarrassed apology after. Your poem is a rock. My poem is unwilling. My poem is the alleyway of broken dreams. Your poem is the secret pathway to redemption. My poem is the bite, the sting, and serpent poison. Your poem is the anti-venom serum. My poem is a cry of pain, trudging in the rain, the walk of shame. Your poem is the sacred journey, the holy pilgrimage, a return to Eden. My poem is tired and lost, all alone. Your poem is the light. To find my way home. Your poem is home. Your poem is home. Your poetry is home. End poem. Thank you. So um, the next one I'm going to show a video. Some of y'all have seen this. Let me share screen. Uh, give me a sec to figure this out. So it's a collaboration between between uh, me and uh, some words that uh, a musician by the name, a very talented musician by the name of Selena Tybert. Uh, you can find her on Spotify. Uh, recorded just for me. So she comes in uh, midway in the poem. Parallel lines. Oh, hold on. I didn't uh, share the sound. 
Oh, there it is. Okay, here we go. Parallel lives. Maybe we knew each other in past lives. I was a horse and you a unicorn. This is why our cans in this world are like canters. We are maybe strutting in different directions. We are don'ts galloping across the horizon as if the grass were grander on the other side. Maybe we were insects. I was an ant and you a dragonfly. You hovered then paused on a leaf. I scampered around you like a frantic puppy, nipping lightly then backing off until you peered at me with those googly eyes, searching for some reciprocation. Then you flew off. Maybe we were the tortoise and the hare. I, slow and steady, you, fast and frenzy. There was never a race, only a blur glimmer of my ancient face as you sped by. Then I was run over and you were gone. Maybe we were the Sphinx and the Pyramids. I was pointy-headed and looking up. You were regal and lounging serenely looking yonder. I was burning in the sun. You were tanning after a run. And then the sandstorm hit us and we were buried under and long forgotten. Maybe we would never ever meet again in the next life and the life after that life and the life after that life. Maybe these fleeting moments are all we have. No pharaonic beginnings, fairy tale endings, or a sopian also rants. Just this poem and our cans. Always, Julian, go for it. Okay. Ooh, looks like I lost my script. So the last one is called the ledge. Thank you for Raul and everyone for attending this uh, feature. I look forward to hearing the rest of y'all. So this is called The Ledge. Hey world, I wanted to tell you I'm okay now. I'm in a good place now. And no matter what you have thrown me and all the anxiety and depression and pain that descends upon me now, I'm 
more aware of the ledge than ever before. When regret sweeps over me on the losses of the who's and why's and wherefore art thou the people gone before me, the fallen, the errors of my selfish race, the ghosts in the machine, the failings in our genes, the longings and the madness, all the worries and perceived suffering, I know it's just a feeling of always being so close to the edge but knowing your distance from it and where you stand ever so briefly. Stability cobbled on jagged stones. Even so, there is clarity like the weather, it will pass. And though I have no control over it and sometimes find the tears streaming down like fire and ice down this trembling precipice, I know this too will pass. And I will get past this and this ledge this ledge will hold. I'm in a good place now, world. He will get better. And we will be better for it. Let it be, let it be, be still. And let it be. Cohen says there's a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. Jesus said, let the first among you cast the stone who is without sin. I once thought that I am among the lost, the broken, and I pine for the fallen, but I no longer believe that anymore. I am among the falling. We are all falling in some way. And every now and then on that ledge, we need to put our arms out and catch someone. Thank you. Let's unmute, guys, and, and love them up. Pop it up, pop it up. Great stuff, Julian. Um, Wonderful. Thank you, Julian. Nice work. Beautiful as always. I feel like um, I just watched someone bring pen and paper into a shop and said to the steward, this needs to be worked on and we just watched the master wordsmith spin words and metaphors and similes and oh my gosh Julian just when I think you couldn't get any better you knock me over the head again and that snake poem oh brilliant yeah um my poem my poetry well, like bird songs on a morning walk a brilliant line to me that 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 symbolizes a lot of who you are as as, as a human being um <clears throat> what are your thoughts poet what are your thoughts oh julian, julian knows so this julian knows my favorite poet poem is the duality one <laughs> thank you he just heard yeah. that yesterday yeah <laughs> <clears throat> In Japanese, <laughs> I feel like I was just uh, placed in a in a spell. Uh, that that was truly inspiring, Julian. That was truly inspiring. Um, yeah, and that was the texture uh, of words and uh, associating. I, I called him recently. I was like, uh, I, I I called him a, a very very you know acute observer because he stands there and observes. And then you feel the texture of what is being observed. Mm -hmm. And then in observing it, then he, he introduces this window where he's interrogating what is he, he's observing now, you know, so he will stretch what was merely being seen into like this interrogation of what does this all mean? Like in such brilliant, brilliant metaphor. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's just amazing. Uh, there's that one about uh, the, the, the guys who were running away trying to reach for the plane as it was leaving. And where you explain that the guy was actually a very, you know, a uh, very smart guy. He wasn't like this person who at that point in time would have been so desperate to leave. Mm 
<laughs> that's how intense it was. And I think that's such a superpower <laughs> to be able to do that. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing your, your gift as always. Thanks for those comments. And, you know, this is the part where we, you know, the, the you know, the features on these recitals mm -hmm. is followed with a, a Q and A. So I'll get mm -hmm. to ask some questions. If you have questions you wanna ask, uh, you know, um, a question, not tons, because we do need to get onto the other poets, but I wanna spend a little bit of time and, and, and Julian, if you can just share with us, because you, you're not just a poet, you know, you write many different things, but writing poetry, when did you really start on that journey? When did poetry um, show up for you or writing showed up for you? I only started writing poetry uh, five years ago. I wrote something about uh, on the third uh, memorial for MH370, the plane that uh, went missing eight years ago in Malaysia and still hasn't been found. And I just posted it on Facebook and a friend said, hey, that's a poem. You should come read it. At, uh, at a gallery called uh, Sex Sun, where we, uh, Karen Baka, a very known literary trainer and teacher here, yeah, organizes a reading. And I had no book with me, I had, I had nothing published, and, and I just read that poem. And that started me off. And I, after a while, I realized uh, I should take this seriously. <laughs> 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 because some people are totally, I mean, really affected by it. So so I went for one workshop, which led to another workshop, and another workshop, and I've attended quite a few workshops since, and uh, trying to train myself to listen better to other poets and, and read more poetry, because I have no background or literary background in that. But that's how it started. Yeah. OK. What is it about? poetry writing that that you really connect to? What is it that you like about it? So I was a journalist for okay. half of my profession and a media trainer for the other half. And, and in between, I was uh, writing PR, public relations pieces. So often uh, when we do all this kind of writing, it's based on, it has to be based on fact and it has to be accurate and it has to uh, you have to be non-emotional and objective about it. And then, uh, then I did, discovered poetry. I realized there is a uh, there's a way to just release and be as subjective as you want, and uh, be as emotional as you want, and wear your hair, hair heart out on your sleeve uh, without worrying about being too. Uh, uh, objective or non-emotional, yeah. Okay. So poetry does that for me. Okay. Were you interested in writing or the creative arts when you were younger, like a teenager, a young boy? Yeah, so I, I was always an avid reader. Uh, I, I used to borrow my brother's library card so I could borrow six books at a time instead of three every two weeks. A uh, real nerd, uh, but uh, not not literature or not poetry. I, I never got into Shakespeare, not even the simplified version of Shakespeare. <laughs> I would read science fiction, Asimov, and I would read Agatha Christie, and of course, uh, earlier would be Enid Blyton and the Hardy Boys, and later would be Frank Herbert's Dune, and, and, I, I, and I used to read a lot of cowboy stories, Westerns, uh, influenced probably by watching a lot of TV. So I used to read Louis Lamour, if anybody remembers him. Uh, then he later found out it wasn't even his real name. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I used to read a lot, yeah, uh, in my teenage years, yeah, but never poetry. Yeah. If, a, if a young poet, inspiring poet, writer comes to you, what advice would you offer them as they start on their journey to? You know, the creative arts. I think one of the hardest things for a lot of young poets is the ability to share it. Mm -hmm. So they are, they are terrified of uh, putting their words out there because it, it's so personal. It's probably written in some diary or written on some online private uh, social media like Wattpad or, or, or Instagram or, or now TikTok. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, yeah, so I think the first advice I would give them is to to share it, to 
be a little bit more open about it and not worry about what people think or say. And uh, as you go on the journey, you will discover that a lot of people, a number of people resonate with the words you post. And from then onwards, it's a matter of just discovering forms and formats and learning about different poets and attending open mics. It's so much easier now, I think, with Zoom than doing it in in person because in Zoom, if you're introverted or shy, like many of them are, or, or terrified of criticism, um, you can just click leave and go. You don't have to mingle. <laughs> you don't have to say hi to the audience after. You don't have to, uh, you know, you don't have to participate in any, any of the socializing if you don't drink or you're not into alcohol or you're not at bars or, yeah, so, yeah. Okay, so, good advice. And <clears throat> that's so true because it's funny, last night uh, my son buzzed me and uh, he shared a clip because he uh, is trying to sing. He wants to, to, to try singing. So he goes, he sent me a, like, you know, a minute 30 clip of him singing, first, first attempt at really singing. And uh, even through that, he was so nervous. Like what, what, what would Pops think? And I go, same thing is I just have the confidence to share it and accept the criticism, the feedback that you get because it's how you're going to grow. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely identify with that advice. Uh, on a lighter side of things, Julian, what is, what is, what's your favorite word? You have a favorite word? I know there's so many to choose from. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wait a minute, oh, that's that not like a scene from when Harry met Sally, so. <laughs> <laughs> but yes is your favorite word? Yeah. Can I ask why? <laughs> I just did, I guess. <laughs> I think in the set of questions, you said me one of it was least favorite word as well. So the least favorite word as opposing to yes would be. Would be no. I can't. I can't do it. I can't. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yes, would just be the opposite of that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, what sound do you like the most? What's what sound do you love the most? Wow. So many to choose from. Um, can't think of any particular one right now. It's okay. That's okay. Silence is good. I'll, I'll accept this. Your silence is as, as your favorite sound. Yeah. I know you said you were a journalist, and you know, like many of us, we've had many different professions within our career. Is there a profession, or is there something you know other than what you're doing now that you would really love to do or like to attempt? Um, lots of things I've been, I have a, like a bucket list of things I've been trying in the last, last few, five years, ever since I got into poetry and it opened up like a door of, mm. hey, why don't you try something else? Yeah. So I did try stand-up comedy for a year. Did you really? That was fun. Wow. Yeah, that was fun. Okay. It's a whole different ball game when you're on the other side of the stage. <laughs> you can imagine. You, you look up at them and you think, oh, this is easy. Then you go on stage and everything that you've done prior to that, <laughs> I wear a coat and a tie and face people who are CEOs and have no problems with that. But, and sometimes I can crack a joke there, but if I'm supposed, I'm so naked and vulnerable when I'm doing stand up on my own with a stage full of people, I mean, an audience who are wait, paid for to hear someone make them laugh. Yeah, that's that's uh, high expectations. Yeah, so I tried art. Mm -hmm. I thought I was good at art when I was young as well. So I enjoyed that as well. So I'm trying to find a combination of doing all that you know, multimedia and art and and a little bit of comedy and humor and and uh, finding my creative side because mm -hmm. that was released uh, four and a half five years ago. Uh, just to add to that, I I quit drinking four years and. Uh, five months and uh, one week and two days and three hours and six minutes, but who's counting? <laughs> <laughs> not us, not us. It sounds like you're, you're, you're almost having like your, your second or third childhood 
as, as in this stage of your life. Uh, it's, it's, sounds like you're in a good place in, in who you are and understanding where you are, more importantly, who you yeah. are. Um, yeah. Before we wrap this up, is there anyone within the audience that has a question that, that they would like to position to Julian? Yes, uh, Mercia, um, you have to unmute. Uh, what kind of journalism did you practice, Julian? Oh. Uh, when I started out, I was doing uh, uh, just on news desk reporting, which was everything. It was a small newspaper at that time. Later, it became the number one newspaper in Malaysia. Um, so crime, covering politicians, uh, uh, courts. Uh, yeah, so and then later I, I moved into technology and business writing. I found a niche there and I was writing for CNET and ZDNet and News Bytes. So, uh, I was writing for a subsidiary of Washington Post Newsweek called uh, News Bytes. Uh, yeah, so I did a Thank lot you. of technology writing. Yeah. Julian. Uh, I'd love to ask you, what is your process with writing poetry? Do you have a certain time of day that you set aside? Does it strike you? Are you engrossed in your day and something comes to mind and you have to stop the presses and write it down? Can you talk about your process? All the above. <laughs> It used to be I was driving, sending my kids to school or back from college later or picking them up. Uh, things would occur to me as I'm driving. I don't know why, because you're so used to the route. I think you reach a, your head reaches a kind of meditative state where you're just doing it automatically. And words started coming to me when I and I, I had to sometimes pull over and put it all down in my phone in case I lost it because I would never remember it. So later the process became uh, very different. Uh, I forced myself to uh, wake up in the morning. The best time was around 5.36, wake up early. Um, at that time when the pandemic was happening, it was cool because uh, Billy Collins had a Facebook broadcast. If you haven't followed that, please follow it. It's uh, irregular now, but it used to be daily where he would have a Facebook broadcast. For me, it was 5.30 in the morning in Malaysia. So I'd have 45 minutes of listening to Billy Collins' poetry and the poems that he liked. And then immediately after, I'd pull out my phone. By the way, I, I write almost all, in the first few years exclusively on my phone, on Evernote. And I would just thumb it in bed. That was my process uh, of things that I heard or thought of. Yeah. And then later, I... Uh, I formed a group where we would write for a month over one topic. And uh, in that daily prompts that I gave, I wrote 23 out of 30. And some of them wrote around that as well, around 15 to 30 poems. And that was a good discipline to do, to write every day. And nowadays, maybe I do maybe one or two a week when it occurs to me, I see something or I hear something. I attend a lot of open mics. I hear something and that word tells me Hmm, maybe not, maybe something else. <laughs> so I, I can to relate to that. Yeah, yeah, with the open mics, I sit there with a notebook. And if something occurs to me, I have to write it down. So now every time I go to an open mic, I immediately start a new page, I head it at the event and the date, and I immediately just start writing anything that occurs to me. And the driving thing too, when you're driving so many times I'll be, oh gosh, oh, I have to, uh, I have to write this down before I lose it. So I'll pull over and get out my little notebook and get it down because mm. what if I lose this thought? Oh God. <laughs> It'll go to the next person. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, what really, what really really humbled me was uh, have you heard of uh, rosemary trauma word woman she writes a poem every day and sends it to you and posts it mm. and then i met judy turek you might know her from the open mic scene jr turek she writes every day as well 
and she writes a poem every day, sometimes two or three poems, she says, and that blows my mind. That really mm. blows my mind. So every time I reach a point where I think, hey, I'm doing okay, I meet someone who's doing 100 times better than me and more productive. And I think, okay, I got to step this up. <laughs> I have so many years to go. I was only doing five years. I'm still a kid. I'm still, I'm still a baby at this. I need to step it up. Yeah. I can identify because, I mean, poetry came to me 12, 13 years ago. I was telling, I was having a chat with a new friend last, uh, yesterday. And, you know, I don't usually do workshops or do prompts, but, you know, from talking to her and even listening now, it's like, hmm, what the heck do you have to lose? And even if, because I, I too, I don't sit down to write poetry. I, I, I get these downloads, these thoughts, whatever, similar to you guys. And then I capture it. I'll either work on it right away or some of it gets stored. And like you, Julian, I, for the longest time I wrote just on my phone, but now I've, I've, I find I've gone back to pen and paper. I find it, uh, I, I find it uh, I'm more connected when I'm writing with pen and paper, and then I'll obviously transfer it on, onto my laptop. Um, I don't know, it, it's all, almost meditative when I'm writing with pen and paper. So, it, so I, I get that. Um, Thank you for the questions. Uh, we'll end with one question. And this question I ask, uh, and, and you know, this is something that I, I have stolen from uh, the actor's studio. Uh, you know, James Lipton uh, uh, stole it from the great French um, interviewer whose name slips my mind right this second. I knew I should have written it down. Um, you know, the 10 questions that, that you ask, um, just trying to get to know us in a different way other than just being poets. So this last question is not a design on religion. It's just, it's a fun thing. If heaven does exist, Julian, and you were to make it to the pearly gates, what would you hope God said to you when you approached? What the hell are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> you took a wrong turn somewhere, is that what you're saying? <laughs> okay, I didn't expect that answer or the way you emphatically answered it so thank you thank you for playing along thank you for uh answering the question and thank you for for i mean uh, i don't know how many of you have, have gotten to know julian personally uh, you know like i said i just see him in the, in, in the uh open mic uh zoom uh events and every time i hear his poetry i feel i get to know him in a in a, in a different way so uh thank you for indulging us with the q a thank you for your honesty not just in your answers, but in your poetry. And it, it's a reflection of, of the kind of human and man that you are, um, I think. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, like I said earlier, I think we, we, we all signed up this morning and stepped mm -hmm. into a master wordsmith class. And the, oh. the, the way you spin words, the metaphors, it blows my mind. I'm still shaking my head. Um, you know, thank you, thank you. I might thank play this so tonight as I go to sleep. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, unmute and snap it up, clap thank it loudly, you, whoop it up for yes. Mr. Julian Matthews. Nice work, Julian. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. I tell you what, that last one got me. That last answer. Oh my. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just like to comment. I think now I want to see him do some uh, some stand up comedy. <laughs> Can only imagine what that would be like. So, all right, guys, we'll continue on. Thank you so much for being here again sun Sunday morning. And Julian, once again, fabulous, fabulous set. All right, let's uh, continue on with the, the recital part, but uh, not ready for prime time poets. Um, each of you will have the ability to do two poems or five minutes. I like, again, once again, I'm not running a clock. So if you, if you tend to go a little bit longer, the, the big giant hook is not going to come and pull you out. Um, and someone always has to go first. Someone always has to go last. And I always tell people, this is like a love affair. You stay in it till the end. We're not exiting it off because we stub our toe or we have our first argument. We're going to stay in this. Well, the invitation, I can't order you to do anything. I can and you won't listen. But the invitation <laughs> is 
the same energies that we have for the first poet, let's bring to the last, let's love him up and be here. We get to spend Sunday morning together, even if it's virtually. That's the beauty of the times that we live in. We get the ability to connect and use technology. I realized, uh, uh, you know, a couple of days ago, I'm always, always self-analyzing myself. I've been fearful of social media because of how it's being used or the narrative and what people are saying. I'm like, you know what? Okay, thanks for the experience I've learned, but I don't need to fear it. I'm going to use it the way I want to use it and connect with people the way I want. Because at one time I, I, I posted poetry and I pulled all my poetry off the ones that I could find from social media. I still may not put it back up, but I might start slowly populating or putting stuff out in groups that I really respect uh, uh, what people are doing. So, so um, yeah, so we get to share. So having said that, I'm gonna shut up because I do speak a lot. Uh, I might butcher your name. So if I do, I apologize now. And uh, yeah, I might butcher it. Like the first person that's coming up because it's funny, he was at the last open mic and because I didn't recognize his name, I didn't call him to the mic to recite. And he sat there patiently and acceptingly and supporting everyone else. And never even once said, I didn't get to recite. And then afterwards we were chatting offline, uh, you know, uh, through Facebook Messenger. And then I did, the name connected. I like I, in that moment, I felt so bad because he was sitting right there and I didn't invite him. So I'm gonna, uh, bestow the honor of him of asking him to be the first poet, the first not ready for prime time poet to recite this Sunday. So I'm going to try this. So Huto, if Zom Kondo, say it again. Zom, Zom, and then Corn as in Corn. Zom Corn, uh, Zom Corn, and then To as in To. Zom Kondo, yes. Okay, Zom Kondo. See, Corn. I was so, so not close. Yeah, and no, it's all good. <laughs> Thank you so much for but having me. But I'd rather me. be straight up front and let you know I'm going to book. Yes, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, guys, snap it up. You, you got it right. Zoom Conto. Yes, yes, yes. Zoom Conto. Yes, yes. Um, uh, my name is Zoom Conto. I'm from Zimbabwe. And the first, um, I, I, I'll make it to the theme of Juneteenth. The first one that I'll, I'll perform is entitled, We Thought We're Not Enough. We thought we're not enough even for our own freedom songs. So we stood counting our worth in front of toxic jukeboxes of this world, which always forced kids to forfeit something more, something extra, until in our failure to afford the whole spectrum, we thought to abandon the dance floor altogether. We almost settled for anything, just as long as it was seen that we joined the dance. But each movement felt like survival. Zombies with no vitals, shucking and jiving to ghost vinyls order other than the one which our dreams defined. Dancing to win titles, but not divine. But the ultimate test came in knowing that there'll be no music at all if you left the line. So we walked up to the front and paid what we could but not before we brood over those coins again, recounting our worth for the millionth time and found ourselves to still be the same left-footed dreamers in a deep-rooted social fever. It was understood that money meant more regulations. We had to dance as stipulated and for the length only that our measly coins could afford. So if they played a love song you had, and you had never known love, you had to reenact the passion. And we launched into acting, afraid to reveal ourselves, like an echo that tries to hide from the mountains, knowing the mountains will find it. And that the mountains will perhaps even gaslight it, throwing its ugliness back to itself. We accepted to just walk through the door discreetly. And briefly, when we looked up, you could see the dance floor in the sky, the one where the big party was. And we were led to the bottom stairs, down an unlit uh, staircase to a dance floor surrounded by creaking chairs, whose dance floor had cracks on its backs like it was slave to the wrong dances. It looked like a setting for a public hanging. 
but you had to stay in character and pretend the romance. Each movement feeling like survival, zombies with no vitals for so long afraid to sing our own songs because we had been told that our voices sounded like croaking folks. And we started to believe it. And so did our feet. But just imagine if they had really seen our dance. If the world had given us a chance to afford to pay more, to contort into all these shapes that lived inside us, pop and lock our ancestry until we nosebleed for free. Imagine what the world would have said of us. There are fears that live in the feet of whole nations and continents. Two left feet rising and falling like echoes of music the mountains are fighting to expel. There are dance floors that are, tap, that are a tap dancing hell, such that each tap is time ticking until the songs rip up and you have to leave. But imagine if we'd believed would be dancing to our own tune today, tonight. We'll be dancing to us. The next poem is a poem for my son. It's entitled, Love Letter to My Son and All Black Boys. Go and do and I am. My son, I wish you mountains that stoop down and crumble the tufts of hair on their crown to form beach sand for the shores that this world will not stumble into and dare to pollute. Where the music of ancient flutes is trapped in shells that populate its blanket of pebbles and stones, which when thrown against the surface of the ocean, with each bouncing motion whistle back the secrets of the snails that died inside those shells, carrying hell on their backs and heaven in their hearts. Those say to have slowed down deliberately and sacrifice themselves so their shells can become refuge for the songs whose melodies are now known for guiding the bruised hips of lost ships back home. Daughter Nayam, my son, I wish you to speak bright words the way light was named with sound in attendance. And that I live long enough for the chance to tell you the story of how light and sound learned to dance for the first time trapping the universe in a trillion light years of rhythm. I wish that as you whisper your own name, you believe it, that each letter in it is a feather inside the largest wing to ever host the wind. And that when you fly, you are not distracted fighting that wind, but just enjoying the area of view. My son, I want to take all the insults of this world on your behalf so that you find half of the world's untruths about black boys already shelved in a bunker somewhere. I would have walked back and forth through time to collect each falsehood and hold it captive in the underworld, not to ban a single one, but to remind you that another generation would soon need you to collect the other half. Make sure the collection is complete, then have a bonfire and invite the neighbors, all singing at the same time, screaming, fuck a racist. My son, daughter Naya, I wish your teenage eyes will take long walks inside the hallways of histories begging to be written, and that those that died greeting their teeth while holding onto olive branches can see you planting seeds and be proud. And that seeing new hunger to know more disarms their spirits and charms them into forgiving the trees from which the spears that dug into their chests were carved. I wish you the rarest form of love. The one that plays catch with itself. Throwing boomerang kisses at the sky, knowing the love will come back glowing with the remnants of dying stars. And that each tiny sparkle of those dying stars will hustle its way back into the sky, into a fully blown sun. Dota Nayam, 
my son. The hourglass will always be a desert of seconds taken away until you are brave enough to shatter the glass and find water. Because that's what I wish for you. I wish you water to flow towards your future. Like hip hop, like poetry. I wish you an elephant's memory so that you remember to forget what they did to me. Write that debt to ancestry. Find your identity. But most of all, Ndota Nayan, my son, I want you to remember that you are royalty. Bye. Thank you. Oh, uh, poets, I'm mute. I'm mute. Yes. Nice work. That was amazing. Wow. Thank you. Excellent. That was a very, great stuff. Well, that's the first time I've heard you uh, recite, perform, and my Lord. That wow. was funny. I think I saw someone wrote in here, your sons are lucky, yeah, to have a father like that. And happy Father's Day, my brothers. So that was that was inspiring. That was thought provoking that I, I've got goddess bumps all over me right now. <laughs> um, so give him another hand, guys. Give him another hand. Wow. Leave your comments in the chat all for right. him. I, I invite you guys, uh, you know, I, if you want, you can always uh, 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 copy the chat if you want to see what people say. But uh, yeah, please dump a lot of comments or leave a reaction, applause, prayer, heart. Give it up. So well done, brother. Well done. We'll definitely have you back. And, and I'm sure we'll be featuring you someday because that was powerful. I almost felt like I was in a theater watching you perform. And, and, and hearing it. it, it was very powerful. So, all right, uh, <clears throat> Daniel from Australia, you're going to be going next after this performer. So up next, um, I'm trying to be respectful to my friends that are in different time zones. So uh, that, that's obviously not in the East, I'll, try, I'll get you guys on, on first. So you, I, I invite you to stick around, but I understand for some of you, it, it's already approaching your midnight. So if you have to leave, please do not feel bad if you're if the sand man or the sand woman is knocking on your door and saying it's time to go to dreamland. So please feel free to do that. All right. <clears throat> so up next, uh, many of you have seen her many, many times, her meditative storytelling just uplifts our souls. So um, I've always, always, always honored when she chooses to share uh, in the recital. So snap it up, put your hands together for Alexandria. You got one woo. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Alexander, get <it>. yes. <laughs> okay, I'm very quiet and shy. So it's not a very noisy performance. <laughs> <laughs> um, everyone can see the graphics. Okay. Yeah, coming through loudly. Flying, 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 sitting on the big garden swing in front of our lemon and pomegranate trees, gazing at the sea. Such beauty in my magical world. All my magic, all my world. And my heart beats strong and I smile, tenderly, encouragingly. And my heart beats fast and I promise to try and follow it. And maybe it's time for the hope to come again. Flying, flying, flying. Still loving you more and more. Knowing you're the one until the end. And my heart beats strong and I want to follow it. And my heart beats fast and I want to find a way to follow it. And maybe it's time to look up at the pink and turquoise open skies for the connection, the certainty of the connection, flying, 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 still loving you more and more, knowing your pure soul until the end, and my heart beats strong and I follow it, and my heart beats fast and I find a way to follow it, 
and it's time for the sweetness, for the satisfaction to come all the way up inside, flying, 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 inside our magical world, all our magic, all our world, riding the same wave, jiving, 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 and my heart beats strong and I follow it, and my heart beats fast and I follow it, I follow it wherever it goes, and it's time for all the believing, for all the feeling of precious, precious vibrations, flying, 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 still loving you more and more, knowing our pure souls until the end, and my heart beats strong and I follow it, and my heart beats fast and I follow it, following, following, following. And it's time for us to receive all these pure perceptions, so centering, so comforting, so home. Flying, 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 still loving each other more and more. Our love flowing between us until the end and our hearts beat strong and we follow them and our hearts beat fast and we follow them we follow them all the way up our path and it's time for all our magic, for all our world, for all our magical world, flying, flying, flying. Thank you. Unmute, unmute guys. Unmute it up. Yes, that was powerful. I love the aesthetic. Yes. Nice work. So I think I'm getting to know this woman a little bit Roll call. Roll call. through our chats on these types of venue and then our own personal chats and she'll always go oh, it's not the same when her husband's not playing her music and <laughs> I think it's just as powerful when you just recite it it has the same meditative feel to when Antakas is playing and accompanying you uh I just I always think it's just brilliant and it just there's this, not much. just a, not just this meditative feeling. There's mm -hmm. almost a sense of everything is going to be good when you recite and, and, and when you share your series. So, um, yeah, it's very very uplifting. Give her another hand, guys. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. Thank you so much. Actually, this poem is awesome. This poem that is Alexandria? not. Sorry. This poem. This poem is not is not about my husband. It, it's a vision that I had. <laughs> yeah. Ah, so that's why he's not playing today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or he's out enjoying tennis, uh, being yeah. Father's Day, right? Anyway, thank you so much for sharing and, and bringing your brilliance always, always. Um, my friend uh, Yanni, you're going to go on after this next performer. So this is how I'm going to give you guys a heads up who's coming up. Um, all the way from Down Under. Brilliant. I don't know if that was a good accent or not, but I won't be doing that on a regular basis. Uh, brilliant, brilliant young poet, uh, another performer, potential rapper. Um, he's in that creative flow right now, and I'm so honored when he shares uh, what he's working on with me. Uh, for some reason, he seems to value my insight, so I'm grateful for that. But um, uh, I just love when he shows up. Anyway, I'll shut up and say, my friend Daniel. My hello, hello, everyone. Good to see uh, you. Um, how are you? I, I hope everyone's been well. Um, I've actually been doing pretty well myself. I've um, I cleared some old dramas that I had going on and I've um, been cleared of everything now. So I've applied for my working with children check so I can actually start chasing my goal of um, helping the children with schools and stuff like that and going and perform my, my poetry through there. So I've already got in touch with one of my old teachers as well. So he's going to open up a slot. I'm just waiting for the card to come and then I can start. So... All, all things are going really well. Um, so what I'm going to read is um, What Thrown, When Alone, Now Shown. Once upon a time, there was I, the one who likes to rhyme. So I'll be talking about now, as this is sort of my prime. New highlight, I rhyme pretty tight. You can see the way I write. It has just so much so much might. I really think these revelations, nah, nah, more like my writing type of invention. Now who's got your attention, as you can see, this is my sickness, like an infection. But it's uplifting, bringing happiness, life's best section. When you think back to when you were young, 
so many friends, family and some. Although, depending on your path, you may be the one to go and left last. Although that just means you need to make sure you're not one bit of the past, like a story. But what's not shown is held by yourself to get your own glory. I know, I know. Words start sticking in as happiness starts to get around. Like this is starting to hit your lips like a beautiful sound. So now you know it's you. You have yourself bound like a bloody tied up hound. Although run, you miss out on fun. Trip and you could go down the narrow bend like you're hitting the end or standing tall like you're at the best selling bookstore. I already know this adores because I always listen to my mum doing my chores. So in your, uh, so is your mind intertwined as this does not bore. You feel a little wisdom unveil just because I never did fall for the hatred hails like finding a needle in a hay bale. So why sink yourself, set tail, now you smile? Or is it I that sits in denial? You already know it's not me. Words with this flow ain't been seen in a while. Reading, you know, I don't feel low. Five years ago, I lost my bro like before, I know, I know. But on the fifth year anniversary, I lost my strongest rosary. John, oops, sorry, I mean my dad. John, the greatest mentor, because you can see just how they, to be making me realise it's better to live letting it be. I'll always be one who will be making people open their eyes, that life, no matter what, will always be a prize. So believe it or not, you'd think this would be me, it would make me lose the plot. My mum, someone again, so young, 66, rushed by hospital, uh, rushed by ambulance four days ago, but it was only November, so not long ago. Dad at 67, rushed by ambulance, gone 16 day, days later, making, the, making that my fear of my hardest years. Going on the same day as I've walked, as long as my five-year-old brother has, no wonder I love the jazz. But my mum, not ready for the clouds, she's too strong, I'm too proud, so these words sound out aloud. Not no crumb, mum is always number bum, number one. No matter what she's done, who brought you into this world? Don't be dumb. Now as your thumb taps, 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 one, two, three, what do you feel as your words is, as you feel these words as you read to see? Stipulated to be stimulated by chasing your own tails down this, a special spiral, but does it really end? The story putting you in jail? Nah, that would be like the old stories. For once I feel some glory. But when loved, like you got your own special white dove, it's the kind, the best kind of hail. Sitting here with a big smile, waiting for her to finish work. Someone so pretty that her eyes light up, light up hearing her name. Like now you've finally got one of life's prizes. No more life of shame. It ain't a surprise that waking up to, to your smile at sunrise is just as beautiful as watching it during the summer setting. Seeing the sun go down, if you look at us upside down, that's the only way you ever see us with a frown. Age is always a big factor, but do you reckon I'll write another book so I can explain it properly, properly chapter by chapter? Love is a captivating emotion, allowing yourself to feel. Now that's your heart really telling you this one is real. Could end up in more heartache, but then that would mean one of us is being fake. There ain't no way that could be true, because for once, I've seen the way they tear over me crying over my brother Blue. So ding, ding, ding. Biggest clue when they even help you learn to sing. Not once would I think I'd do much, nothing more than to help so many more than I already have, as that gives me the greatest joy. If you'd be kind helping someone random that you see struggling, mean stop acting blind. That old lady you've seen trying so hard to lift her walker up the step, yet you walk around, like, come on, wake up, Jeff. Help the rest start feeling your best, getting your own type possessed, and now you're fucking blessed. Like, I don't know what, it even, what even is a quarter jester, but I definitely know all of you are just impressed you. The best advice is always to be nice. The pen will always beat any sword, because I bet my bottom dollar, not one of you got bored. Uh, yeah, I think I think your I think your bottom dollar just in, in, just multiplied. So, <laughs> <laughs> wow! Snap it up for him, guys! Snap it up yes. for him. Well done, my brother. Um, Thank you. Well done. <laughs> All the way from down under. All right. Um, yeah, definitely will be featuring you in, in the coming year. So, all thank right. you very much. Well done, Dan. Good to see you, brother. And I'm glad you're doing well. Uh, like I said, I'm honored that you've included me in your life and, and with this along this journey. So, it's such a yeah, pleasure. Like I said, I'll, I'll keep saying it to you probably every time. Your dad would be proud of the king that you're becoming, that you are. Thank you very much. Becoming that you are. So, well done. Thank you very well much. Done. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. After this next performer, next on the mic will be a first time performer, Mildred. So before Mildred, my friend, Yanni. Hello. Hey, Yanni. Hello. So Mildred, you're next, you're after Yanni, so. It's my first time. Okay. Good morning. Here, but, uh... Uh, okay. 
Yep. Yeah, yeah, New York. Okay. Yep, yeah, you good are. morning. Uh, good evening from my place. Uh, today I want to recite one of my newest poem. Uh, since this one's still a week of Father's Day, so I will bring this one up. A tribute to you, dear father. I almost forgot how it feels to be your daughter. I was that girl who always awaits you on your arrival, honking noise of your car, the voice that always calls for my name. I was that girl who always picking up your suitcase after work the companion of your dinner, who always there to fill your glass of water. I was that girl who always sleep with my guitar every night, wondered, wondered you if I would be musician one day. And you questioned me if I wanted to pick that study. I was that girl who always in every of your conversation, which with such a pride, you said to people, I am such an independent girl. I was that girl who always there to be a place for you to share the fun, sad and mischievous act that you do. Still, I was always teased by you. I was that girl who stayed last in the room at that hospital where you blow your last breath and leave you with goodbye kiss on your forehead. I was that girl who tried to stay strong until today. I was that girl who finally grows to be a fine woman. I am that woman who always have you in my every conversation with such a pride, I say to people. Yes, you are the best father that I ever had. I am that woman who finally be the weaver of words, share my creative thoughts with people and make people in wonder. I am that woman who now responsible for my family, the companion of my husband and son, who always there to support them. I am that woman who learned a lot from you, who always proud to be your daughter and my respect for you until the day I'm gone. Thank you. That one is my first poem. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is a bit emotional. So, okay, the next one. Okay, this one is the newest post, uh, my newest post poem. The title is The Obscure Pandemonium. The stark self-regulation she called as ten. As a human, perfection has never been equal. The silence clogged her life's credit, trickling the peace to a tricky cerebral, cerebral, sorry. She washes the black and white under her skin, reclusive figure imprisoned in a ruse, imported her second face, buried her sin, unraveled the phobic that she tried to reduce soaked in a sea of fears. The brutality of words raped her morality. They replaced her sanity as it died and seared. Live unsteadily, she wished her mind's sanctity. Grasping the beauty in an artificial paradise, the longitudinal of absurdity didn't stop. Shouted, and shouted at the empty space, the lemon has compromised, dissolved 
within her madness, her nature began to throb. For the implication of the rotten silence, deep abyss creates her in bitter resilience, resilience, sorry. In a bitter resilience, okay, thank you. <clears throat> unmute guys, unmute. <clears throat> Give it up for Yanni, Ooh, snap it up. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Okay. Um, those, I love yes. Yeah, I love your Father's Day poem, uh, Yanni. I love your poetry, period. Um, uh, and I think it's time we catch up. We haven't done a video chat in a while. It's so cool watching you recite now because I know you're still nervous. And I always keep telling you, invite the nurse, but you, the more you do it, the better you get, the better you get, the better you get. And it's like, there's, there's a flow and polish to you now. So keep doing it. Keep, keep showing up, keep reciting. I'm gonna keep inviting you to there's other open mics and I'm gonna send you to do. I know there's a time difference, but that's okay. Who needs sleep when you have poetry? <laughs> anyway, Yanni, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you, thank you. Um, up next, we're gonna have uh, Mildred followed by uh, Messia, Leslie and Claire. Um, so put your hands together, snap it up. She's first time, first time reciting at, at the recital. Put your hands together for Mildred, thank you. Woo! I'm quite a little nervous. <laughs> Although it's not my first time, only on this side. Uh, anyway, I'm a teacher by profession. I teach literature and I've been around uh, with different platforms. Yanni, <laughs> I've learned about this from Yanni. So, acknowledge her. Okay, I will be all about my home. Forgive me, it's all about love. Love is like the wind. Love is like the wind we breathe. It comes, it goes. No need to force it to stay or be with you all day. My heart is too grateful for the freedom in you. Love is like a grain of sand. Would you count it? It would take a lifetime to reach each pebble. We take it forever. My heart filled with love like a grain of sand. No need to count. Love is like a morning sun. It enlightens, energizes, revitalizes, radiantly pouring out life to everyone. So selfless, giving to each and every being. Love is tranquility of a spring, flowing, never the same. Yet giving more, this love is overflowing. Source never runs dry. My heart never grows, but in the news like spring, freely flowing. Love is so bad with the expense of blue sky, it cannot be measured. So how will I love you without limit and so blue? Because I can't hug you. So far yet with my gaze, my eyes kisses you. Love is like the petals of the hibiscus, red, wild, passionate, and beautiful. I lost the other half, but anyway, there's my second poem. I am gold. I am gold. I am gold. You forgot. You put me on fire. You melt but I seem to transform in your hands. He thought I could be of worth. He thought I was extremely precious. His hands gave me shape and I found this is all that I ever wanted. To be felt, to be touched, to be given worth. His hands mold me, yours to set me aside. He burns me each time, each dip he made me melt. He plays with me each time new design. He never lets me be held by others as he puts his signature in each of my design. And it tickles each time I felt wanted and burned and I flowed. It made his life richer. What could be richer than life being made happy with fun times. We play with things, I melt, he molds me. In his design, I submit. I do trust him 
as it treats me precious. Of course, I am cold, and he knows it. So that was my second. Can I have another one? Or it's time for me. <laughs> Kindness oh. saves the day. Human lives are so intricate, complicated, and fragile. We interact daily in the family or with strangers of anonymity. So we can always say we are safe and secure to set different paths for different strokes. In whatever circumstances, we affect others in our daily lives. Most chances we are rash, impudent and reckless. Being kind is so underrated, yet it is so highly mighty and powerful. It can change somebody else's life in circumstances beyond our control. Like giving food to me as strangers, it can make him feel the day believing somebody still cares in the world. Humanity thrives, goodness prevails. And giving clothes to street dwellers, you need not give much but a little. Yet for others, it goes a long, long way. At the end of the day, kindness saves the day. So I have given three poems. The first one is uh, like love was like from we and the second one is I am gold. And the third one, kindness saves the day. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak before you. Oh, uh, this you is so my first premiere, so thank you very much. Thank you so thank much you for that. bringing your energy and your poems. I, I love the line that uh, he puts his signature in each of my design. So that, yeah. Yes. Great wording, great phrasing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mildred. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Snap it up for guys on mute. Give us some love. Yes. You know, give, give the love poet some love back. So well, love, you're not just a love poet. Thank you, Mildred. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The show continues on. Up next, uh, our friend uh, Mercica, are you still there? I believe. Yes. All right, my friend, you are next. And after you will be Leslie. The floor is yours. Thank you very, thank you very much. I am honored uh, and happy to uh, have the opportunity to read here. Uh, um, it is for the first time. And uh, the honor is, uh, us, uh, is, uh, is bigger because of this. Um, it is a very high level of poetry, a very high level of poetry, of the quality of the poetry that is read here. And uh, I can say that uh, I was, uh, I was uh, very, I was very much uh, impressed by each of the ones that read until now, each of them in his or her way. And uh, I want to congratulate you for this, uh, for this initiative. I'm going to read uh, two poems, one of them that was written some long time ago, but uh, in a certain circumstances, I dedicated, uh, I dedicated yesterday, actually, to someone who is here in this, uh, uh, in uh, this Zoom. Uh, and uh, I would like to read it uh, because I feel it belongs to this atmosphere to the atmosphere of uh, of this uh, of this uh, lecture the title is eclipse translation into english by uh, tomas mika they bought us a yearly ticket for metro even before we were born we took the metro to the maternity hospital to nursery school to kindergarten to elementary school to secondary school to university, to work, and to our retirement. We are not passengers. They just transfer in our country from one surface to another. We are not afraid like them of what can be below or inside, since we know very well that below us, there has nothing been nothing for a long time and not even above us let alone uh, let alone above them we're only afraid of the midnight express 
It does not stop anywhere. It doesn't even have a driver. And so it cannot break at all. And we are also afraid that one day all the trains will become midnight expresses and we will never hear again. Final stop, please leave the train. End of the first poem. And uh, now I will read the second one called Paint or Your Self Portrait made by me. Translation into English by Judith Hontol. You have never been mine. However, your picture in my computer was mine for sure, at least at the very beginning, when it presented you exactly your image perfect, the way you were looking just then, that very moment, when you accepted being taken a picture, that unique ephemerid that inspired you into not being afraid of becoming immortal. However, little by little, I began to forget. I began to forget those uniquely specific features of yours, the way you used to look like that one and only moment. And I wasn't able anymore to imagine you exactly not to mention the way you should have certainly changed during all that time. Therefore, I started to work on your picture in my computer with different graphic programs in order to make it more likely to your probable or at least hypothetical, however, to me completely unknown current look of yours or at least just in order to make it, let's say, more credible. You have never been mine. And now even what used to be that time, your picture in my computer became some image into which I had already inserted too much of myself for continuing to pretend it is still depicting you. And it contains and yet it contains from you so much and in the same time, at the same time, so little that I am aware it can't even be mine anymore. How your picture in my computer used to be at the beginning. But there's something I know for sure. The computer is definitely mine. I get into it with the help of a password which only I know, and you will really be mine only when I forget that password forever. Thank you. Can you unmute and snap it up. <clears throat> Clap it up, Woo! loop it up. Yeah, great work. Well, 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 well done. Thank you for, uh, you know, we've, I've sat in many <laughs> rooms, you've interviewed me, but it's the first time you've, uh, recited here so thank you so much for 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 bringing your gifts and your love and the work you're doing and trying to to help shift our humanity so thank you my friend keep doing your good works appreciate you being here thank you so much thank you so much thank you i'm honored thank you my friend um okay so up next we have leslie and after leslie we'll have claire and then uh, sheena so Put your hands together for, uh, this. she'll actually be our feature next month. So I hope most of you will return because uh, getting to really enjoy knowing this woman. So put your hands together for Leslie Constable, guys. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm really delighted and honored to be here and just really enjoying listening to everyone's work. I'm going to read, um, four short ones for me. And so I'll simply begin. The first one's called Found Light. We find that we are there, the diagonal path through the overhanging trees, sure and clear the branches clamoring for our attention, pulling at our clothes like eager children. 
We did not expect the laughter, the sudden laughter that played through the trees, the steady hum of insects, all the while a sweet song across the reach of trees and higher up into the searchful sky. We embrace, found now, in this pool of light that marks this spot, this end of the path, and this time now. We are together, found now, in this light, found together and not alone, found now and not lost, never lost. The second one is called Not Sleep. The not sleep becomes the dream you wrap yourself in, the shroud encased your beloved hands, your hands, my beloved, still at your side and fitful for release, you seek the mirror you darkened, the one electric light bulb behind you obscuring the image that is you, that was you, not seeing now and unsure, obscured and silent, the ghosts standing behind you only in sharp focus jeer and want satisfaction, schooled in despair and desire, schooled by a want you cannot have. It is your turn to deny them. I have done my job. Turn off the light and quietly walk away. The next one's called Plenty. Inscribed by language, tattooed by love, the pause, deepens and waits. Where is the promised freedom, the release, the cat's paw behind the barred window, tentative checks for passages out, cautious, still, yet not broken or gone. The rain signals the release. It chooses another escape and waiting, checking the sky for signs of rain, scouring the clouds for symbols, this or that, what meaning the color red assigns and banishes all replaced by thoughtless blue. Is there the moment of going, the moment sunk like a stone in the well of abject stain? Why the feet ground like roots growing down, infiltrate the soil, cling and cloying, see the four directions and travel underground. Perhaps I travel that way and not in the sky, above water, sinuous as a root system growing underground, travel deep and far, forgiving the earth which softens and allows my passage, the root system seeking water, the pool of resistance, that deep the well of souls like you, the sisters smiling, the aunties, the hands that work sure and steady, the faces deep, the ocean of kindness, the faces of familiars who say, we know, traveling to the well to meet you. Who am I to know, to say I know, that we all seek light is enough. Finally, this one's called Four Walls. Um, my dear mother, rest in peace, um, is, is, was as much in her own self a traveler as I am. This was very internal because she didn't travel a lot. Um, and I am quite a traveler. So she used to do this rant about these four walls <laughs> that contained her. So this is dedicated to my mother on Father's Day. Oh, well, four walls. I have come home to a space, not an idea. The space answers my call, gives me comfort. The idea, the opposite, and unsettles with its vision of too much, asking the walls to be a cathedral, a city, a carnival, a receptacle of all that is the best and holy when it is not. It is only four walls and it, this idea of space is only what I put there and fits at the time, nothing else. And at night, after the hurried thought of day, I lay down my body on this, my humble bed, which holds me, supports me as I sleep, and the pillow which nests my overheated head and allows me the release of substance of this form, which holds me during the day, of which I am captain. And at night, safely held in this, my bed, I travel above this, my home of four walls, glittering a star in the night sky, released, owning nothing, being nothing but that I am, the me that I am, pure vision, seeing in the rarefied air. That's all for me. Thanks, everyone. 
Okay, on mute, snap it up, woohoo it up, clap it up. Thank you so much. Yay! <clears throat> nice, Thank you. Um, <laughs> now, I, I, know you wrote, I know you read a poem for your mom on Father's Day, and my attitude is this what better day to read that? Because without without mothers, we're not fathers, and without fathers, you don't get to be mothers. So we need each other. We we are built on each other's foundation. So thank you. It's an apropos day to read a poem for your mom. So thank so you. So well me. said, and I so agree. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> well, I, I I just know without the two women in my lives, I don't have the three children that I do. So, mm -hmm. so blessings to you guys. Thank you, Leslie. All right, right now we have in the green room we have um, uh, Sheena and Kelly, but up next to the mic, first time to the recital as well. Um, I believe she's in is in Portland, Maine, or or in Maine. I, I'm not sure. She'll tell Portsmouth, you. Portsmouth, New Hampshire. New I'm Hampshire. actually on the border of New Maine Hampshire. And New Hampshire. Yes. One of the other northern northern states. So, mm -hmm. anyway, put your hands together for Claire, guys. Welcome her to the the recital. Yes. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Raleigh, for inviting me. I really appreciate it. I am coming to you from New England. I am a board member of the Portsmouth Poet Laureate Program and um, involved in all kinds of, you know, uh, poetry projects. One of them being, I just published my second book, Silent, very happy to share that. And uh, I'd like to read two pieces from my new book. Being Sunday, I thought that I'd read this piece, Sunday Morning's Light. Nightly ravings, poetic, musing, pierced by Sunday morning's light, its clarity lent to pages of muddled madness, suppressed sadness, bewitching hours possessed of divine inspiration, narrations, reflections, and relevations, insights. Where did it all go wrong? I'm tired of being strong. Haunted memories where we shared the warmth of Sunday morning's light when we had no idea that things would go this way. Perhaps I thought you'd stay. Now I'm taunted by a Saturday night where writers don't write, but compose a memoir. Passions unrequited, love uninvited. Thank you. The second piece I'd like to read for you is a piece that I wrote for my cousin long lost cousin I hadn't seen, I still haven't seen her in over 30 years, but we, uh, about two years ago, we found each other and we have this connection. So sister, cousin, stranger, friend. Only at night can I observe the fat spider outside of my kitchen window over the sink. When I look up, searching for the moon, she's on the outside looking in, terrible, delicate beauty. And I wonder if she sees me while admiring her own self in the mirror of our window. Her in the threat of weather exterior and mine the storm within inside, trapped like her delicious prey, wrapped lovingly hanging in the pantry of her web, an extension of her very self to store away morsels, prizes. One day to feast upon, like my homemaids in jars on shelves and hanging herbs, and I think on the daughter of my aunt, named for a flower. Sister, cousin, stranger, friend, 3,000 miles and over 30 years between me and Squaw Valley, where you tend your gardens, 
you love the raven. And write poems to your own window spider. We have an unspoken coven. Thank you. Thank you so much, Claire. Thank you so much for showing up. It's funny, I've never heard you recite. I don't think, I think I've maybe read a couple of pieces online. That's why I trust the way the universe works and that feel that I get from people. I just knew you'd be brilliant. I just knew your words would be brilliant. Thank you so much, Rolly. I really appreciate the opportunity. Oh, it's an honor. You. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm, I've heard other hosts say this and because I completely agree. I said it for 11 years when I ran an open mic. I feel like I'm stealing from you guys. I'm the one that's fortunate that you would come and share your brilliance. So give her another hand. First time reciter, um, you're welcome back. Definitely welcome back. Um, brilliant. Okay. And the hits keep coming. Um, so we have in the green room right at the moment, uh, Kelly and Ian, but up next to the mic, uh, another first time reciter to the, to the, uh, the, to the, the show and a friend of uh, Julian that just reached out. So put your hands together for Sheena or we'll snap it up. Thanks very much. And uh, thank you for letting me recite. Um, this, this is a poem, of, I, I don't know if it's a poem, I, I don't know what it is, but it came out of me one day. Um, it came out of me on my birthday after I'd gone out and I think I was a little bit drunk, but so I don't know what it means. I'm just gonna go for it. On nights like this, I wish I was a lesbian. I watch these girls, these beautiful defiant girls strutting, gliding through the night, free from the need to pander to the male gaze. I look at these girls, their glow, their confidence, which flashes like a neon sign. This is a penis-free zone. No matter what size or shape or color, they are without exception adorable, for they do not subscribe to any known standard of beauty from a woman's magazine. They dress for themselves, pose and posture for themselves, and whether in jeans or sneakers or satin and rumpled linen, one wears a short, slick, orange 20s flapper style dress with sneakers and purple socks. They exude pheromones of comfort and acceptance. I watch them as I sit across the table from a man. He's a bland man. I have already forgotten his name and face, but he keeps talking at me, mostly about himself, because really, what could be more fascinating? He wants me to think he is significant. I hate myself for wanting him to think I'm pretty. I'm too old for this. I wanna get up and leave. I wanna be at that other table with those girls. I want to be them accepting my sags and crags, my thickening and stooping contours. I want to be them intolerant of insult and snub. I want to be them proud and preening, sitting up straighter because that's who they are. Not because of the reprimanding inner voice that chides, don't slouch, you were brought up better than that. I want to be them owning the room with their laughter and wide expressive gestures, telling their honest tales because they own themselves. I want to be done with lying beneath in submission and surrender. I want to be done with the legs spreading, the heaving, thrusting bulk of dangly bits and stubbled faces. Let me rather explore the landscape of peaks and valleys, troughs and sweet damp caverns, soft of skin and silk of hair and limpid liquid flow. I look across to the gulf that divides me from them. All it would take is a single step, but I am afraid. This is not a land I can enter lightly, contaminated as I am by the imprint of male possession. This is sacred ground of the divine feminine, and I cannot, will not defile it. 
So I watch and wonder and wish I knew how to find my way in. Wow. Wow. What the heck were you drinking? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever it was, it was great, Sheena. Whatever you Drink got some drunk more. on, I want some of that. Yeah, pass that over here. Great stuff. Um, um, can you I've share one, one more? more yes, please, time, yeah. please, please. Okay. Um, this is about places of significance and it's called looking out for my chair. My writing chair and table overlook the balcony. The birds come to talk to me. They perch on the rails. Common miners have the best gossip and they never agree with each other. But they have no time to wait even to argue with them amongst themselves. They bounce from one rail to the next. Chirp, they insist. Chirp, they are so certain. Then having delivered their snippet of gossip, they leave. When I first moved in, there was an empty piece of land across the road from my apartment. I say empty, but it was in fact teeming with life. Scrubs and shrubs and trees and creatures I didn't see. Early in the morning as the dew dried, I would spot a flash of kingfisher blue. In the afternoon, before the rain, another flash of canary yellow. Then one morning, the tractors arrived. The first to go were the trees. Green turned to red laterite soil. The termites fled first, seeking refuge in our building. They made short shrift of our PA system, doors and kitchen cabinets. The snakes left too in the night where they could slip away in silence, their path lit by the headlights of cars coming up the hill. The birds did not fly away. They stood their ground. The sparrows I thought so shy and silent stood up to a tractor, a flock of them on the ground, their scolding drowning up the roar of the tractor. Or maybe I only imagined that. Later, they filled that space across the road with sand and made it flat, level and lifeless. A friend who visited said it looked like the base of a giant cheesecake but no amount of condensed milk will ever sweeten that graveyard of birdsong. The flash of kingfisher, gone. The flash of canary yellow, gone. In one of the houses they built there, someone keeps chickens, one of them a cockerel. He keeps no time, crowing the break of day at noon, at 8 p.m., or whenever he feels to make his, the need to make his presence felt. The miners still come to my balcony bearing gossip. Cheap, they insist. Cheap! They are so certain. Then having delivered the news of the day, they leave. <clears throat> Unmute, guys. Give us some love. Snap it up. Hug it up. Yeah, yeah. wonderful stuff. <laughs> thank you for thank you for, yes. thank you for coming to support Julian, but then reaching Woo. out as wow. Thank you. Thank you very wow. much. Very nice. Thank you so much. And and please put in the chat whatever you were drinking that night. Because <laughs> if you're gonna drink that and then gonna write stuff like that, I want some of that. <laughs> <laughs> and you know for those of us that may not drink anymore we might consider falling off the wagon if we're gonna <laughs> so, um that was just brilliant give her a quick hand thank you for, for, for coming and, and speaking all right and the show we're getting close to the end so uh loving 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 to see the love that we're coming we're still showing up with for those that are reciting now so um Right now we have in the green room, Ian and Marianne, but up next to the mic, my really good friend, good to see her smiling face this morning, Kelly. Hello. <laughs> love her up guys, love her up. Hello, Hello. I'm... How you doing, Kel? I'm doing good, hard day, but it's a great day to be alive. There so. you go, there you go. Um, I have a cathartic piece called To Whom It May Concern. Maybe some of you 
um, may or may not be relate or relate to this because of the day it is. To whom it may concern. The prison break from cell 1A is officially being addressed. Beginning immediately, I am relieving you of your duties. You've chosen to keep your weapons. However, I am disarming the effectiveness of every one of them. Say much what you may and do what you must, but I am not your prisoner anymore. Your puppetry can never keep those keys. And I finally acknowledge that. My confidence and worth does not rely on your charity. I'm not indebted to you simply because I was born, nor did I ask to be. My mere presence on this earth does not guarantee you my servitude. Although I have built my legacy on every scar you made, I refuse to stay and endure your disrespect and debilitation over and over again. I am not your friend, and I finally realized you were incapable of being mine, no matter how hard you posed as such. You no longer hold anything over me, not my flaws or my shame. I've recognized your game, and you can no longer manipulate my behavior with every fear of what you might think or what you would think. I don't even care if you're unhappy with this knowledge. For your opinion of me is none of my business and I'm done. I once was a trophy you would display for show, but it is not my responsibility to uphold your faulty conditioning. I no longer wait for an apology and I will not leave my inner child vulnerable to you. Many, many years you wasted the opportunity to apologize and make it right. I still forgive you for forgiveness sets me free. However, you will no longer be in my life in any manner, even if you feel an immediacy to object. An urgency on your part does not constitute an emergency on mine. This is my closure. You mad? What a pity, tough titty. This letter was meant to be written by me more than it was to be read by you. I would send both my middle fingers in the envelope, but my body is too precious to purposefully inflict, purposely inflict another lesson to unlearn because of you. I also won't use my lips to seal this for my kisses are too valuable to waste on you. They say love is blind, but without vision, my other senses supersede and compensate accordingly. I wouldn't want my eyes to wound themselves again by seeing another ounce of trauma bestowed by your version of compassion. Every gift you've ungiven me has a price and I paid the rice with my family, my friends, and my life. I'm a survivor of your narcissism and by declaring my independence from you, I am healing injuries I knew and didn't even know existed. So I've screwed myself over enough by keeping you in my life. Now I unscrew me to say, screw you. Sincerely, your daughter. I know that was a little bit long, so I don't know if I have enough time to read another. <clears throat> well, long or short, go. All right. Um, this one's called Bear With Me. Open it up real quick. Bear with me. If it'll open, that'll be great. Bear with me. <laughs> bearing the pen onto the paper, bearing my soul. Steer this pen to the left and I'm losing control of a horse with no name of my hopes, dreams, and goals. And that's when life may try to swallow me whole. I live like I'm dying and die like I'm living because existing seems like a sin not condoned or an unforgiven. So give me the guillotine for the nails that I've driven into my own hands and feet. Self-sabotage is not beneath me. Ask me if I know where this ink goes. And I'll take you from my happiness to the depths of my throes. From those days I want to end my pen to the days I feel reborn again. From the days I chose life to the days I didn't. From the days I wish a period was the end of my life sentence. And I don't know where my mind went. And I'm too wary to find it. While every thought's waiting for my ink to sign it. And I'm just spent. I don't know if I'll survive this though. I wish I could strive like those who think they can guide it. 
these same people trying to tell me how to live my life. And some days I wish I could take a knife to carve out those who wasted my time. They ended up being ones I had to rhyme about just because they wanted to fuck with me on my dime. They said they wanted to help me, but their true intentions were sublime. Damn. If I trim people out who caused me to shed tears, then that would have, may have saved me some of these 35 years. They've wasted my energy. They've scarred my fucking life. And all I have to show for it is a metaphorical knife with invisible wounds and a proverbial clock that I can't even tell when it ticks and when it fucking talks. All I can do is scream in the thin air, seeing as that's how my screams can fare. Well, the pen and paper are more than fitting as words live like they're dying while trees die like they're living. The air swallows voices whole, taking hopes, dreams, and goals. So I'll steer my, steer my pen to the right for I am back in control. My horse is named Poetry and it feeds many a foal. So come ride with me. Come ride with the best and let's bear our fucking souls. Come bear with me. Thank you. Poets on mute. Let's ride with her. Let's ride. Nice. <laughs> Stop, Great Scott. job, honey. Oh, man. What, the, what, what was that line? Uh, give me the guillotine for the nails I did. Nails I put in or nails I nailed in my hand. Damn, girl. Oh. <laughs> that was give me the guillotine for the nails that I've driven into my own hands. And driven into my, yeah. Damn. Okay. I'm writing. <laughs> give her a hand, guys. Snap it up. Well done, Kel. Yeah. Keep having doubts that you're not good. <laughs> I'm going to keep showing you that that's a lie. Big lie. Anyway, thank you so much, so much, so much, Kel. All right. So we have in the green room, Marianne and uh, Rescue Susan, but up next, all the way from across the pond, uh, he may not be officially a professor, but I'm calling him a professor because he's <laughs> in the throes of marking exams for his students, who I'm sure he inspires every day, but we appreciate you taking the time. Hey, just take the praise, brother, just take the praise. Uh, yeah. Well, it, it, Very it, it, early on, I fell in love with his poetry when I think I saw him in uh, Between the Lines. Anyway, guys, put your hands together for Ian. Yeah, Le Professeur. The Merci. Professor. <laughs> and after Kelly's turn there, I feel that we've gotten out of the habit of writing letters. You know, we should be writing more letters. Perhaps not quite as like Kelly's, but we should be writing. <laughs> we should be definitely writing more letters to each other so okay the first one uh, is called timelines it was one of those that i started got stuck and then i had a trip earlier this year to the jurassic coast which is the south coast dorset in england uh, where it's well known here like for sort of fossils and sedimentary rocks and that kind of gave me a bit of a kick start to finish it off anyway it's called timelines what is this line running through me? Stretched taut as a guitar string one minute, hanging loose like a sagging washing line the next. It's been the one constant in my life, sticking to me like a burr, unable to shake it off, resisting all efforts to loosen its grip. It pursues me even in sleep, in dreams, flickering like sputtering candles before their life finally dies out in a cooling well of melting wax. But time runs on in constant streams, flowing through aging fingers like grains of sand, its tracks found only in frozen layers of ancient stones, encasing hidden gems of past lives that ran out of line out of time, time rescinded by a stray piece of space debris. This locked in time capsule shows itself in the layers of sediments solidified by time's elapse, at times uncovered in sudden rock falls, time crumbling into piles of rubble littering the shoreline. In the meantime, I remain caught 
hooked up on this line, pulling tighter year by year. <clears throat> At times I find I might find some give as the divine angler cuts me a little slack. But in the end, I cannot escape its pull, hooked up like a returning salmon that finds the barb unforgiving, unwilling to release and let go. And like a blind fish, the more I fight it, the tighter the line becomes that pulls me in. But if I relax, perhaps, it may just loosen its hold, just enough to swim more freely without feeling this tiresome tug of time pulling at me incessantly. So, and first mm. part. And second one, this is one, this is the first part of a long poem I've been working on uh, over the last few uh, couple of months. And uh, it's based on uh, a piece by Terry Riley performed by Kronos Quartet called Sunwings. It's based on some recordings by a NASA space scientist of those strange sounds going on in space, giving the impression it's not the vacuum that we may have thought it was. There's <clears throat> lots of things going on. So this first is the first part. It's called Overture. Sparks fly, the universe hums. Gazing upwards at the interstices between sky and space, the void shimmers with echoes of ghostly voices. Frozen flakes of charged ions brush the stratosphere where layers of indigo and ultraviolet vibrate, ululating in ripples of space-time. The pulsating heartbeat of a thousand generations skips to the seismic shocks of quantum shifts invisible to the naked eye. Every atom in my body thrums to the dulcet bass undertones of the universe. Each nerve ending quivers and tingles to strange harmonics like the chimes of a gamelan orchestra. This alien music shakes the air in subparticle waves, lighting up the northern skies. Magnetic force fields strum my senses like flamenco strings while bebop rhythms scramble the surface layers of consciousness. Voices rise and fall, appearing through swirls of plangent sounds, like holy white rollers on shingle beaches, like a metaphorical stone thrown into the unfathomable aeons of deep space, watching, listening out for ephemeral notes gathered gathering on convoluted antennae, like murmuring starlings as infinite rings germinate in concentric bands, bouncing back off fugitive realms of dark matter that we sense but cannot see or touch. And all this while sparks fly as the universe hums in infinite interstellar harmony, Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Thank you very much. I'm muting love him up, guys. <clears throat> you know, every time you read, uh, uh, great the, work, Ian. Uh, yeah, the imagery okay. and, and the complexity yet simplicity of your words just blows me away. I always feel like <laughs> I'm sitting with one of the great masters, listening to he or she <laughs> composing in the moment, and then then going, hey, Roll, what do you think of this? <laughs> That's what it feels <laughs> like when I listen to you, Ian. Brilliant, my friend. Give him another hand, guys. Give him another hand. Well done. I love you. Uh, hey, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll take that title, Professor, and use that in my <laughs> future professional uh, performances. Well, I love it. I love it because it definitely fits you, my friend. Well done. All right. So we have in the waiting room, in the green room, Terry, R, and Rescue. But up next uh, from the... West Indies, my beautiful friend, Marianne. The chance together, snap it up for her, guys. Told you, we're global, man, we're global. We got people from all over the world. 
Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for the opportunity to join again today. I had some other poems in mind. However, when I was listening to Julian speak earlier on in the Q&A about young poets and things that might deter them, I chose something um, that I know people, you know, we've all experienced that where we're reading and you know that the audience is thinking, is that about you? So I'm going to try this one called If I Die Tonight. If I die tonight, you'll know because my sister will tell you, unless she won't. She says, I'm not yours to know. She wants me to be yours or used to. She'll tell you I'm walking from sunset to moonrise into the dark where sea meets sky. Walking, just walking, unless I'm not. The neighbors will tell you I've gone with someone golden. My car waits in the garage till Tuesday or Wednesday when my body aches from love and I want to sleep in my own bed, unless I don't. Young women do, but I haven't been that young in years. The job will say, I don't cause that kind of trouble. They hate to think of me that way. Dying was so unlike me. So they didn't think of that at first. Surely somebody will at last, unless they won't. If I die tonight, friends we don't have can't tell you. They don't know I existed. Your wife can't tell you. I never existed. So you'll think I just stopped loving you and you'll wonder why, unless you won't. And it's fine. And even though I am here, as we're all said, on a rock out in the Atlantic, I live on the island of St. Martin. I'm more recently, well, 20 years ago recently, from Toronto's beaches. Um, we do, of course, uh, feel along with the rest of the world when different things occur in the news. And I'd like to share a piece um, from February 27th, 2021. Patterson, Mississippi, used to have a grist mill, a hotel, and 176 souls. An easy used to be backwater. They used to call it Martin. Too remote to catch the eye of a modern municipality. The kind of used to be nowhere place. Where folks could bake a chocolate cake, decorate it, with those rainbow sprinkles that dissolve on the tongue, sing happy birthday and call it a big night until the bickering began and the shouting and the shoulder pumping jousting began and the girlfriends roused too late to cajole the boys and their guns back into captivity with, oh, come on, baby, we're having fun. Too late for the two merrymakers who would not see their own next birthdays but at least the three only injured remember how they all shouted happy birthday and everyone was so glad that for once Patterson, they used to call it Martin, was big news, center of the party universe for one night. Thank you. Wow. On mute, guys. Thank you so much, Mayor. And thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. <clears throat> I was having a bit of technical issues trying to get you to spotlight. And I don't know if some of you that organize or do stuff, Zoom's been acting weird. So that's that's why. Thanks, uh, uh, Dia and Trophy, for letting me know that. But I was trying to um, spotlight you. But okay. give you another hand for a brilliant poetry. And thank you for, for My pleasure. sharing Woo. a poem that was inspired by Julian. One, Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we're almost done, guys. So um, up next, we have Terry, and then we have in the green room, uh, Rescue Potrix, uh, uh, Susan, and then the man himself, Richard. So up next to the mic, Terry. Hi, it's hard for me to angle this phone the right way. It won't stay, I'm to move it around. It's just, you know, it's a nuisance. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Uh, I'll just hold it. <laughs> This, these are two pieces for people who have passed on in my life that I used to know. The first one is for Garvin. 
This is the poem that I never got to write for one of my best friends. First, because I was not a poet. And second, because I never knew that you would crash in a plane with few survivors of which you were not one. But the story goes you sacrificed your life for your wife, giving her a place of air while you went to search for a place of your own, breaking through to the other side of heaven. There's no closure for us that we're left behind. I found out years later when there was no place yet left to grieve. So I'm writing this letter to say goodbye to the piece of my heart that once housed you. Did I make a mistake by not trying to put a cage around it to keep you safely contained? I think you would have willingly stayed. So that's that piece. And this piece is for Billy. My mind dipping, I feel it, that feeling of being trapped and needing to escape, wanting to claw, push, break, burst through any barrier between me and the door. At this time, I make a beeline for an exit, any exit. My consciousness goes through methodically all the places I've been before and do not under any circumstances wish to return. My mind wanders back to that time when he was alive and asked me if I ever wondered what would have happened if we stayed together. I lied and said no. Because how could I have admitted that night after night I would return to the place that we used to meet, hoping to bump into him there again? How night after night I would drink myself into oblivion and stumble my way back to the crappy apartment with the paneled walls and the leaky roof providing a waterfall effect when it rained. The place where he made me dinner with what little I had on hand. How, how was I supposed to know that would be the last time? How was I supposed to know that when he said he was sick and dying, that he wasn't just looking for a reaction? My reaction was not to accept that as a final answer. My reaction was my mind's way of protecting me from getting hurt anymore. Brushing it off as some kind of silly joke and getting him to admit that it wasn't true when in actuality, it was. And peace. Thank you. Unmute, thank you so much, Terry. Thanks for bringing your creative love. Lovely. Thanks for sharing those, those tributes, Great. appreciate it. Yes. Yes, wow. Great. Thank you very much. Those were deep. I think it's important to, <laughs> to remember and honor each other even when we're no longer in this physical world. So thank you for that, Terry. And thanks for joining us this morning. All right, uh, um, Daniel and Yanni had to leave. Uh, they didn't want to interrupt the flow, so they just sent me a note saying, say everyone, uh, um, thank you, and they had to go. Uh, Rick had to leave, duty called. So. So we get the honor to end this recital with uh, my friend from New Jersey, the Port Laureate from New Jersey, uh, poetic, is to say the least. Anyway, I'll just call her rescue, poetic, poetrix, goddess, whatever you wanna call her. I uh, had the honor of featuring her uh, uh, earlier this year. So um, you get to take us home. You get to, to, you're the caboose on this long train of poetry and the caboose is a good thing so <laughs> all right anyway guys give it up for susan thank you thank you all it's been such an honor and pleasure to hear everyone um recite and perform and so much energy so much wonderful energy here <clears throat> i'm the poet laureate of jersey city and it is an honor to be here among you Creída en la ciudad es una experiencia diferente en el verano. Sidewalk barbecues fill each breath with charcoal and smoke. Neighbors bring what they have for the makeshift set of table. Grills surrounded by well-intentioned self-proclaimed grill masters, especially on Father's Day, secretly waiting for the chance to flex their tongs. From the card table at the corner, the slam of Capicú announces the end of the latest round of dominoes. 
marble tiles defiant to the glaring sun that bakes the black top, bouncing from brick to brick to brick to kissing those rosy cheeks of the kids running in the streets. Limber y piraguas of pineapple, mango, lime, red and blue melt before they can cool parched lips. Salsa, merengue, bachata, hip hop, Latin jazz. Give the street soundtracks, blurring from windows in multiple directions, our weekend summer camp in stereo. Fire hydrants splashing about, stick ball, laughter, double dutch, tag, hide and go seek until the street lights flicker on. Universal call that brings the block to bath and bedtime. Dominoes clashing, shifting in block circles on that shaky tabletop, fading smoke and street smells. Black backdrop of familia hanging out on stoops. The families bunched on different areas, still talking one by one. Stoops empty out, abuelitas y tías checking in. Charcoal dumped over the curb. Embers grasping the last light to be seen through a midsummer night's gleam. Thank you. And my last piece uh, is a piece that I submitted to NPR um, and WNYC here in this area for National Poetry Month. They put out a contest, so watch for that. Every National Poetry Month, they put out a submission, call for submission on different themes. This year, the theme was normalcy. So uh, this piece is written based on, give me one second here, my computer is doing things that it's not supposed to be doing. So actually, you know what? I'm going to switch it up. So this piece is called Our Own Excellence. We navigate society that judges by views and likes optics that mean nothing, no substance or meaning. Behind that lens of curated acceptance is where the real work is done, where life is in the hands of persistence, struggle, Lessons learned, small victories and big successes, side by side with our failures and doing and redoing and doing again and learning more. Our role models and mentors, rarely mentioned in print or media, create, shape, and defy the norm. Give us the ability to think bigger, imagine brighter, each and reach farther within our own struggles, within our own daily lives. Zyla Avant-Garde, 14, first African-American coveted title of spelling bee champion, a word she never heard from the other side of the world, Moriah. Nancy Red wished her daughter could see herself represented in books, bedtime bonnet, shows different ways black people of all ages ages take care of their hair. Farmers, lawyers, poets, doctors, musicians, teachers, writers, authors, history makers breaking down barriers. In this celebration of black excellence, we reach beyond the city we're in. We reach beyond the moment that we're in because black excellence is all the time. Black excellence is an ideal that we live and thrive for. Celia Cruz, Miriam Jimenez Roman, Esteban Hotes, Mansa Musa, Alessandro de Medici, Nzinga Mabande. These are names representing heritage, culture, art, science, and us. Through our mixed blood, through our communities, and our families. Your impact, our impact, changes the outcome, the way stories are told. Your stories are important. Your voices need to be heard through your voice, through pen, through hands, through actions, through community, always striving for our own definition of excellence. Thank you.
They on mute. Give it up. Give it up for rescue guys. Give it up. Um, yeah. 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 Always love hearing your stuff. Always love your your, your passion and. Again, another brilliant wordsmith. So uh, I lied earlier. Your closing part A. Um, this is not about respect. This is more uh, or fear of uh, uh, fearness is more respect. Um, Julian brought it to my attention that that um, that Christopher George may want to recite. Like I said, this is not a open mic show. I invite poets to recite. But there's no way we can have you show up to support Julian and us and not have you share with us. So with the indulgence of the poets, I know we're running a little late, but I, I hopefully have another five minutes uh, to offer for our friend who's been patiently sitting and supporting us all. Christopher T. George. Okay. Um, yeah, I have uh, three poems, not too long. Um, this first one, is for Juneteenth. It's called Sissy's Missing. I ain't able to read the ad the deacon ran in the colored Tennessean that I was looking for any information to find my wife, Sissy, who got sold down the river before the war. Sissy and me never got to say goodbye. I was pulling cotton balls when the man done come took Sissy away to where I do not know. My cries of protest earned me 60 lashes, but the man says we don't feel the loss. I thought maybe it was God's judgment for me hitting Sissy those few times. De Deacon told me that's it's not the Lord's doing, but sometimes I don't know what I does when the drink's in me. Sissy's missing, and I'm feeling like an empty barn under the good Lord's starry sky. And a couple of poems on a lighter note. Ode to the Pretzel. O tasty creation of man and God. O Pretzel, how your shape I love. Salty, twisted, crunchy, divining rod. Aim straight for my stomach. I approve of your crunchy charms. Can't get enough. Heaven on a summer's day to be walking by the harbor. Each window mirroring the day, clean and free. As I crunch on a pretzel, all smeared with mustard. Now hell, that's some serious eating, some serious pretzel. And to end uh, a poem about Baltimore, Harbor Place Quest. Above the light street pavilion, the hired silver self-sufficiency reflects the silver blue sky. While on Pratt Street, buses, trolley cars pass the IBM building, friendly ice cream, the banks of daffodils with their fusions of yellow. I watch platoons of people, blue denim in pastel pink and purple dresses, gray suits, polka dot ties, check trousers, charge across the crossing to Harbor Place, trying to find somewhere to go, somewhere to be, somebody. Thank you, everyone. Unmute, guys, unmute, unmute. Thank you so much, Christopher. And thank you, Julian, for bringing it to my attention. I was thanks, good to Julian, you. and great, great presentation, Julian. Yeah, I appreciate it, Christopher. I, I, you know, you didn't say anything. I, like I said, it's not an open mic, but I appreciate Julian bringing it to my attention because that's why I trust the way it works. Up, just like never hearing Claire before or Sheena just showing up, and it's, so I said, I love the way the universe works in my world. So, anyway, guys, that's the end of this month's recital. Um, I thank you for being here. Um, once again, Julian Matthews, you are a star. You are a star in our lives and this planet. Keep writing, my friend. I'm so glad, like me, poetry knocked on your door five, six years ago. And just like you encouraged the young ones or what you said, what you would pass on to the young ones have the courage to share, continuing to find that courage 
and 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 sharing your brilliance. You are you are a brilliant writer. I just love your stuff. Um, but then again, I guess we could say that about all of us. And that's the thing, you know, when we take to the mic, or you know, we 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 come on after someone that we really think is a great performer. Don't compare yourself because what you have to offer, no one else can offer. We may say the same words. We may write the same words, we may think the same thoughts, but no one can offer what you offer, but you, you are that unique. This is how we are special because our voice is important in how we perceive things. And we may share the same perceptions, but the way you share it, no one can do it the way you do. So I invite you to keep writing and get it off the page and jump into these open mics and jump into these recitals. If not, create your own damn one. Even do it in your own living room with your family. But <laughs> share. There's a power to sharing. I love the written word, but there's a power to speaking it and speaking mm -hmm. it with conviction and passion. And don't make excuses if your poem is sad. There's no such thing as a sad poem, just like there's no such thing as a love poem. I'm not a love poet or a sad poet. I'm just a poet that writes and you will take from it whatever you take. That's the courage. That's the beauty of poetry. That's the job of us poets is to speak our truth and to speak it with conviction. Speak yes. it. We are the last bastion of free speech. Don't let anyone take that away, especially yourself. So on that note, I will say thank you. I love you all. Um, today we had the honor of some some conto. I may have butchered it again. We had Alexandria, Daniel, Yanni, Mildred, Mercica, Leslie, Claire, uh, 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 Sienna, not Sienna, uh, Shanna, uh, Kelly, Ian, uh, Mariana, Terry, Rescue, and Christopher. Unfortunately, uh, Richard was here, but he had to leave. Uh, duty called, but. Uh, uh, what an amazing gathering of humans. When I look in this window, I see the different shadings of us, but what I see is human. Mm -hmm. And what I see in this world today, we have humans wanting to deny other humans and we have battle lines drawn and I'm a Republican or a Democrat or conservative. We can have whatever labels we want, but at the end of the day, we are human. There is one race on this planet made up of 31 different flavors. And look, look at how we look the same. We act the same. We think the same. We drink the same water and breathe the same air. The real mosaic. Yes, well, we man, are. We are the mosaic and we are the rainbow. That's all these lovely people. Well said. Yeah. So take that energy and spread it throughout the world. I know right now things seem crazy with inflation and politics and all that, but man, there's still a lot of good going on on this planet. Life is not just one thing. We, don't do good. we need to step out of these absolutes and be able to look at someone else's argument or positioning without wanting to get pissed off or feel that we're unsafe and, and all this nonsense. We are our own safe space and we, we are the bastion of love that shines for everyone else. Yeah, okay. So that's the end of your Sunday sermon. <laughs> First you with love. Thank you for supporting the Inspired Poetry Corner Recital. Thank you, Julian, for your brilliance. Once again, thank you, thank you. And all my fellow poets and, and, and wordsmiths, thank you for supporting this. Spread the love, baby. The world is in transformation. It feels like we're going to hell in a handbasket. We're just transforming. <laughs> How we transform, that's up to us. That's up to us. So I love you all. Thank you and have a blessed day. Happy Father's Day to all you fathers. Happy Father's Day to all you mothers that made this fathers. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Roll. Thank you, Julian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for inviting me, Julian. Thanks, everyone. Do you that again, brother. Take us out with that sound. <laughs> Keep evolving. Keep doing Bye, it, everyone. Love you Bye, all. Everyone. See you Bye. soon. Bye. All the best. <laughs>